hello my baby gorillas and are we live <laughs> can you see me oh my goodness what a performance that was try and go live honestly it's not just like i said it's taking me about an hour just to actually be able to uh, live stream i had to change the signal the whole thing was an absolute nightmare and i'm sure it's been done deliberately um, but uh, let's see what the chat is. I've not seen, I've not talked for a wee while. I'm still under sanction of being banned, so I thought it'd be better if I uh, didn't say anything, didn't do anything. But um, this was just far too good to miss. Let's see if we're on here. Sure, it's been done deliberately. Oh my goodness, um, that's but, a bit loud. Uh, let's see what the chat is. I've not seen, I've not talked for a wee while. Let's try and turn that down. I'm still under sanction of being banned, Don't so I thought it'd be better if I... Uh, yeah, that's a bit loud, isn't it? So let me just check everything's working. Let me just check if this Graphic is working. Party of Germany, the SPD. And yes, that is Hitler. There's also video footage of this event where Hitler is visible, although I can't show it here for copyright uh, let's reasons. Let's see what the chat is. I've not seen, I've not talked for a wee while. Let's try and turn that down. I'm still under sanction of being banned, Just so I thought it'd be better if I... Uh, that's a bit loud, isn't it? So that sounds much me better. Check everything's working. Let me just check if this Graphic is working. Party of Germany, the SPD. And yes, that is Hitler. Fantastic! Hello, my baby gorillas. Ah, oh, yes. I think we've got everything. Uh, let's see what the chat is. I've not seen. I've not talked for a wee while. Let's try and turn that down. I'm still under sanction of being banned. So. Right, that's quite enough of you, sir. And let's have a wee look at before we go on to Hitler was a communist. Oh, this guy tech just goes from strength to strength. Three thousand likes, thirty-five thousand views. So Hitler was a communist in 1919. Now, we've been saying that Hitler was a, definitely a socialist. National socialism is a socialist ideology. Nationalism is not a left or right thing. It might be left or right within each of the four um, political boxes on the, uh, the political spectrum. Um, so it might be right wing, but it's not far right. National socialism is a socialist concept. It's not the same as communism, but it's under the greater umbrella of a socialist concept, national socialism. The opposite of national socialism, or the, the far-right version would be na national capitalism. That would be the far-right um, version of uh, uh, national socialism. And again, uh, proved right, both Mussolini was in the Socialist Party uh, before he, be, uh, he became a fascist. 100,000 Jews, as Tick has already pointed out. I'd love to know this uh, gentleman that does Tick history, uh, T-I-K um, history, who, who, what his name is, because absolutely brilliant research, the, the best. And, and, and I didn't even know this, I hadn't studied this part of uh, Hitler. Um, although we uh, and c conveniently avoided uh, by the socialists, isn't it? So this is one bunch of socialists fighting against another bunch of socialists. So what have we got? I, I'm just going to I'll go. I'll do the other bits at the end. But uh, he he just dropped us. So if you want to check this out for yourself, I'll try not to use all of it. But it's just so good. So Hitler was a communist in early 1919 on Tick, T-I-K, Tick History. First time I've ever heard this. He's also mentioned correctly the National Socialism and Fascism were not the same ideology. Correct politically, that's correct politically as well, which I've said for years and years, but I've never gone into the detail that this gentleman has got. I wish, as I said, I wish I knew his name. Let's see if I can get it up. Tick History, Tick History Name. Real name, Tick History's real name. Who is Tico? Tick History versus Real History. Tick History versus Real History. Mm, that would be quite interesting. Yeah, I don't know this. Oh. I don't think it's Lucy TikTok uh, let's see if there's anything up here P 
Patreon. I don't know if this fellow's got his real name in. So he's just going to tech history. I'm not actually trying to call him out or anything. I, I think he's just absolutely superb. Love to spend chat to Carol Benjamin. That would be great. Be a very interesting episode that would be. So, what have we got here? Let's hope this is going correctly. I think we'll turn him up a bit. Hope it's not too loud. This is a picture of the funeral procession for Jewish socialist revolutionary Kurt Eisner, who had been a member of Karl Marx's party, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, the SPD. And yes, that is Hitler. Who had been a... a so the so, And this, is, this might get confusing. The Social Democrat... I'm just going to play that again. The Social Democrat Party of Germany was a Marxist party. So even though it's called Social Democrat, if, if if it was the Marxist party, I would take it as actually a communist party. So let, let's just hear that again. Something I didn't this know either. This is a picture of the funeral procession for Jewish socialist revolutionary Kurt Eisner. Now, obviously the Jews had a big hand in the, the murders in Eastern Europe as, as well. The, 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 there was a, before, obviously, the, the Jewish Holocaust under National Socialism, which makes this all seem like finding a, a machine gun uh, at the Battle of Waterloo. Um, that uh, Obviously, um, Hitler and uh, National Socialism became very anti-Semitic, but obvi- the, 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 he's going to point out parts here that are just it's just unbelievable so the social democratic party with Marx and Engels being the um, ideological inspiration for uh, uh, communism but in Germany which obviously Engels was German or English I th- I don't, well certainly uh, German uh, that uh, he, he was actually putting forward this under the, the, the sort of Jewish influence here of the uh, international communism. Who had been a member of Karl Marx's party, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, the SPD. And yes, that is Hitler. So I'll just let, I'll let you hear that one more time. This is a picture of the funeral procession for Jewish socialist revolutionary Kurt Eisner, who had been a member of Karl Marx's party, the Social Democratic Party of Germany. The so the Social Democratic Party of Germany was Karl Mar- Marx's... Um, I don't know if Karl Marx set it up, uh, obviously from a, a Jewish lineage as well. SPD, and yes, that is Hitler. So Hitler is a, a prominent... Jewish communist, revolutionary communist funeral, which is, uh, as I said, it's like finding a machine gun at, uh, at the Battle of Waterloo. There's also video footage of this event where Hitler is visible, although I can't show it here for copyright reasons, and there's contemporary evidence explaining why Hitler was elected into Kurt Eisner's Bavarian peoples. He was elected. He was elected into... Uh, a revolutionary Communist Party, Adolf Hitler, National Socialism. State, and then after Eisner's Socialist Republic collapsed, he was elected again into a Bavarian Soviet Republic, which was... So, a Soviet Republic, um, this was based on, and obviously there was a large um, Jewish influence, not only, uh, at, well, in the, the Communist Revolution as well, communist and why despite being a raging anti-semite not long after hitler was attending the funeral of a jewish socialist revolutionary who was the leader of that bavarian socialist republic so i mean and i'm sure we've all been indoctrinated into far right far hitler was far right fascism was far right 100,000 jews in the italian fascist party also tick managed to um uh, cover that as well. 100,000 Jews in the fascist party uh, of Italy. And uh, and now Hitler is in a Marxist, uh, revolutionary, communist uh, party who, who, where he's been elected for it. Although, uh, although he's become anti-Semitic and killed all the Jews. 
Also, one of Hitler's chauffeurs, Julius Schreck, founder of the SS, and seen here with Adolf, fought in the Bavarian Red Army. So the the Communist Party, the, Bav- uh, the Bavarian Independent Socialist Party, I think the name of it was correctly, um, which is a, a revolutionary communist um, entity run by somebody who was Jewish, both Adolf Hitler and Julius Schreck were both in it. Wow, this is mind-blowing stuff. And Freikorps Epp fought against this Soviet Republic with members including Ernst Röhm, Hans Frank, Rudolf Hess. And one of the things that, um, that people who don't want to recognise National Socialism as Socialism is the fact that they say that they fought against other socialists, but socialists and communists, and uh, even even between uh, postmodernist Marxism and traditional class based Marxism, there's a uh, animosity there. So the fact that two communist or socialist elements fight against each other, just like the trans and the the TERF movement, both and radical and radical feminists who are. Uh, um, could be included in Marx, certainly socialist, but certainly could be Marxian. The the, the somehow the the trans socialist lobby, uh, the, the 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 left don't get any fights amongst themselves. They've always got any fights amongst themselves. Always two different uh, takes on the best way to get socialism. And both of the Strassers, who were supposedly the left-wing element of the Nazi party but were fighting against the communists in 1919, whereas Hitler and his chauffeur were fighting for them. Did you hear that? Listen to that again. Listen to that again. So there was obviously different wings within the National Socialist Party, which came back to earlier manifestations of them being radical communists. Wow. With members including Ernst Röhm, Hans Frank, Rudolf Hess, and both of the Strassers, who were supposedly the left wing element of the Nazi Party, but were. Fi- so they're the left wing element of the Nazi Party, but they were fighting against Hitler, who was in the radical communist Soviet styled uh, red part of this new communist Bavarian Party, who was affiliated to the USSR at this point. Oh my God! Fighting against the communists in 1919. Were- so this was like a, a an infight between two parts of the same ideology, well, or similar ideologies, maybe two slightly different takes on a similar ideology. As Hitler and his chauffeur were fighting for them. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get on with it. Wow! Wow! I don't know if I can get this up. Um, There is. Uh, always errors, always something. So, what this could mean is that Karl Marx's teachings w- was the actual origins of Adolf Hitler. It wasn't far right, as we've been lied to for years. It was Adolf Hitler. The birth of the new man was the ultimate aim of Marxism. Now tie that back into um, Adolf coming from, uh, Hitler coming uh, from a a left-wing perspective. He already knew about Marx. Then, if he's a revolutionary communist under the Bavarian Independent uh, Socialist Party, he's already a a, a socialist or or even a Marxist um, from that. He's not far right. He's actually a socialist. He might be right on and within the authoritarian socialist part, Maybe, 
but he certainly he could be a, a, a Marxian socialist in that Marx was the, uh, the origins of genocide, including national socialism. Breeding a new evolutionary form of human being who will think, look and act differently. But communists were not alone in this endeavour. The communists were not alone in this endeavour, so that he would have probably known that the communists were trying to make the new man, just like, um, is, uh, again, in uh, diverse Britain, the new man's trying to be made again by a bunch of uh, radical, intersectional, postmodernist Marxists. Again, it's the same playbook. Wir müssen einen neuen Menschen erfinden. Hitler's National Socialism was also about creating a new man. So, what Marx and Engels have done is murdered millions of Europeans, including in Russia, including, uh, and now uh, the postmodernist Marxists, um, a, a lot of whom are Jewish as well. It's, uh, it's very interesting, and it ties back to a lot of Jewish people at this point, that uh, you don't really understand how many Europeans have been killed for this Marxist drivel. In both systems, we have an ideology which, which has the ambition of uh, creating a new man. That means that both, uh, both systems uh, don't agree with human nature as it is. They are in, at war with nature, with human nature. This is the root of totalitarianism. You find it both in, in uh, Nazi. Nazi, it's a biology. It's an ideology based on false biology, and communism is based on false sociology. So, uh, uh, you can understand that. So, it was a small, and text already. Um, uh, tech history has already commented on the his, uh, that Hitler was a socialist and what the slight differences is between Marxist um, international communism and uh, national socialism. Very small, just uh, biology, well, race-based politics versus uh, false social pro politics, all of it a lot of lies and nonsense. But both systems are, uh, have an ambition of being scientific and uh, uh, resting on a scientific basis. The main scientist of Nazism, Alfred Rosenberg. Um, and I think uh, Rosenberg is going to come up here again. So let's go, let's switch back here. Let's start with the facts. On the 7th of November... This guy's brilliant. This guy is absolutely 10 out of 10. In 1918, before the Social Democrats seized power all over... Social Democrats again, so that's Marxist Party, communists. So there's a big communist flag. Germany, Kurt Eisner, a Jewish revolutionary, quit Karl Marx's Social Democratic Party because he thought it wasn't revolutionary enough. So Marx wasn't radical enough and conducted a putsch in Munich. As leader of the Bavarian Independent Social Democrats, he founded a far-left Bavarian Socialist Republic, also known as the People's State of Bavaria. And if you think about the USSR, it's uh, the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic, so it's, it's pretty much... And you've got to think about the time period here. So this is just about the time of the Russian Revolution. Eisner wanted independence from the Weimar Republic and attempted to reform the capitalist system into a socialist one, although he promised that they would not do what Lenin had done in Russia. So, um, obviously, the Soviet famine in 1920. Um, if you look at... I don't know if we can get it up. Uh, band Aid... Band Aid... 1984. Who was in... Power in Ethiopia in 1984. Um, communists. So uh, the communists use famine. 
1984, the date is significant. So, again, uh, the communists, uh, that's what they're saying here. So they're saying that back in the, the Soviet fa famine in 1920, also uh, the Ukrainian uh, famine, every every time the, the communists actually get into uh, power, these are uh, European people that are just starving on the streets by these, uh, well, revolutionary Jewish communists. Uh, the Ethiopian, uh, the communists uh, use, use of famine uh, at the height of famine, which claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of its citizens, the Ethiopian government, towards the end of 1984, so this is Band Aid and Live Aid as well, at the height, so the Europeans basically sent a lot of money to stop Ethiopians, who are great, I love the Ethiopians, I'm a massive Ethiopian fan, from starving because of the communist government, again, like they did in 1920, like they were, like what I'm going to show you that hap was happened under the regime in uh, Germany, and, the, and now we've got it in 1984, year, decades later, the same policies and the same starvation, the plan as explained by the government officials, was to relocate 1.5 to 2 million peasants from countries, mountainous and relatively arid north provinces to what were officially described as uninhabitable virgin areas in the nation's central and southern regions. The government spokesman justified, this is the, the, what happens when uh, governments get big ideas and they can't fulfil it, spokesman justifies the resettlement programme on humanitarian and economic grounds and then they all starve to death. The northern provinces, it was pointed out, were most severely affected by drought and famine, uh, the point where the survival and peasantry depended on a thinning out of the population. A uh, latter point was reiterated forcefully, even angrily, whenever Western governments expressed doubts about the wisdom of uprooting, shifting uh, masses of people around the country in the midst of a catastrophic famine. But it doesn't actually... Oh, here, however, no one outside the communist world believed that the resettlement uh, should uh, be a centrepiece of agricultural policy or that it should be undertaken on a massive scale during the time of fa famine. So, however, no one outside the communist world mm, it doesn't actually tell you, but oh, there we go. The Democratic, the People's Democratic uh, Republic of Ethiopia. So again, the Marxists, uh, the People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, blah, blah, blah. The DRF was established in 1987 as a Leninist Marxist one. You would think they would have learned a lesson upon the adoption of its constitution. Well, that's not it, is it? Because it was before that. The Ethiopian Communist Party set up, blah, blah, blah. Who was in charge? Wikipedia. Ethiopian famine. Facts. In 94... Was formed. Who was... I, I think that's a right, relatively s simple... Let's try Google. There's something that we said about other thing we search engines here is your Democratic Republic no let's see failures failures and collapses Ethiopia had never recovered uh, from the previous great famine of the early 1970s which was the result of drought and affecting most of uh, Africa's uh, sea Sahel famine was caused uh, by an imbalance of population the PDRE limited ability led to develop the development and respond to cries was dramatically demonstrated by the government reliance on foreign famine relief in 19. So these guys were already in, who are a Marxist Leninist party during. I'm reading this correctly, am I? Limited ability led. Uh, development and response cri uh, cries was uh, dramatically the government's reliance on foreign 
by nineteen uh, by the end of nineteen seventeen, fa- famine claimed the lives of ter- three hundred thousand peasants in uh, Trigger and w- Willow. But it doesn't tell you who's in power. Anyway, I'm absolutely sure. Let's not get taken away from uh, these guys. The um, the Marxist Leninist parties have always caused the the problems in uh, in mass starvations. Uh, not really con- uh, considered, and not. I think maybe we should maybe have a um, month about socialism and seeing the the disasters that it's caused. Well, a soldier called Adolf Hitler was elected into the soldiers' Soviet Council and became the deputy battalion representative. Did you hear that? I mean, that's quite incredible. That's absolutely incredible. That's like finding out that Nelson Mandela was a white guy. Old Adolf Hitler was elected into the soldiers' Soviet Council and became the deputy battalion representative. So that means he was a communist soldier in a, in a red faction. He was elected by his fellow soldiers, who also overwhelmingly voted for the Social Democrats in January 1919, meaning that they thought that Hitler best represented their socialist views. Wow, wow. And, uh, yeah, they, I mean, well, I've known for years that um, National Socialism was left-wing, um, but now it can't be denied, and that also put, put boosts up the figures um, for um, genocide, including the including the Marxists. So the Marxists and the the uh, National Socialists should be actually put together as the one entity. Split different, but the one entity and the fact that they're very close to each other, they're not the same, but they're very close politically in the authoritarian left. But this Bavarian socialist regime was unpopular in the countryside and lost support after the election of January 1919. I mean, it's no wonder, since just like every other socialist regime, they failed to maintain food supplies or provide jobs or keep the transportation system functioning. So they just let the economy collapse, a bit like Nicola Sturgeon. Workers began to heckle Eisner and shout him down at meetings. In cabinet, Eisner was angrily told by one of its members, You are an anarchist. You are no statesman. You are a fool. We are being ruined by bad management. So, so maybe he didn't care what had actually happened to the the Germans. I don't know where the anti-Semitism came from. I don't know. I mean, obviously, he he probably wasn't anti-Semitic at this point. But um, I don't know where the anti-Semitism grew. Uh, did it grow through um, seeing Jewish in, this Jewish guy's incompetence? Or did it grow um, from the um, the Frankfurt School? Because the Frankfurt School was pushing this you post, uh, post-modernist Marxist theory. I don't know. Oh, an aristocratic student and former officer, Graf Anton von Arco Valley, assassinated Kurt Eisner on the 21st of February 1919. I... Wow, so the, the, this guy got um, assassinated because he was so incompetent. Uh, tech history is brilliant. Check out uh, his channel. It explains all, uh, all forms of socialism perfectly. Yeah, he does uh, give him that as well, yeah. My German granny went to see the uh, wee Barra live <laughs> in concert. <laughs> it's wee Barra. <laughs> wee Barra. Uh, the Red uh, lost uh, the Civil War in Spain because... They started fighting among themselves. Well, again, fascism if, if fascism comes again from uh, socialism. Both uh, Giovanni Gentile and Mussolini were both socialism socialists like Hitler. Uh, Tick done a video called Hitler Socialism, yeah, where he explains that Hitler's ideology. Yeah, he does, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely superb. Ironically, as Eisner was on his way to resign... There is film footage and a still photograph showing him, Hitler, marching in the funeral procession of the Bavarian independent leader, Kurt Eisner. So, somebody that killed six million Jews, which I I, I believe uh, uh, did happen. I don't, I'm not a Holocaust denier by any stretch of the imagination. I still believe that uh, he did do it in in the information. But none of this sort of information that Hitler was uh, a communist and then... uh, at a funeral for a leading Jewish communist uh, isn't exactly explained uh, in, in the, the road to war. And it's quite conveniently 
miss a uh, stepped over, isn't it? Wearing a black morning armband and another red one in support of the socialist government. Here again is the still photo, and I can't show the footage of Eisner's funeral because I don't want my video to get copyright striked by YouTube, but I have seen it. You can find it if you're determined, and Hitler is in it. Hoffman's photograph is grainy, but both he and his son have confirmed that the photo depicts Hitler. In fact, an arrow had been affixed to the photo's negative that points directly to Hitler, added by Hoffman, his son, or his grandson. In the early 1980s, Hoffman's son publicly confirmed that the man in the photo was indeed Hitler. So, the guy who was anti-Semitic, was that a Jewish guy's uh, communist funeral, which he was in a party with, and elected under, in a red, in a red brigade, in a red brigade of other um, communist slash socialists, or socialist slash Marxists. While Hitler could easily have joined, for instance, the Thule Society, which had inspired Eisner's assassination, and which was full of future National Socialist leaders, such as so the Thule, the Thule Society was the le the, or the, the, the people um, that are mentioned here were the left wing. So this is very confusing. So Hitler and the revolutionary communist part was not the left wing. The uh, Alfred Rosen, uh, Rosenberg, uh, sounds like a Jewish name, uh, Jewish, uh, Rolf Hess and Hans Frank, uh, Hitler chose publicly to show his support for Eisner. So he was on the communist left, and these other guys were in the left of the National Socialist Party. Obviously, there's been some sort of uh, Marxist or communist themselves. What is this? What is the red light for? What is this red light? For a change, everything seems to be working. My goodness, man, honestly, what a palaver it is trying to get this to work. So let's have a look at this. So this is uh, Alfred... Uh, Rosenberg, so uh, back to, let's just skip between, so Alfred Rosenberg, so we're talking now about the same fella, and this guy's on the left of the National Socialist Party. Confessed to the Nuremberg Tribunal that Hitler had misused the idea of National Socialism. So they're, they are obviously committed socialists, and uh, if we had got Alfred uh, Rosenberg, we would have had a different sort of socialism. Indeed, the idea, in the Nazi view, wasn't so bad after all. Healthy, beautiful, blonde and happy people. A future society. And without handicapped or Jews. Nearly a paradise. For some reason, National Socialism did not work out, just as the Soviet Socialism didn't. So, but yep, yeah, now we nippy, um, the mad lesbo, is uh, now wanting to bring in uh, intersectional fe um, uh, Marxism through her interpretation of the Frankfurt School. So that's all been pumped through our system now and people are now being indoctrinated in uh, intersectional uh, Marxism uh, and again that won't work out and uh, we nippy should do this but yet it's been pumped out in every aspect of our society Both left thousands of mass graves, millions of murdered people. Was it coincidence? A lot of Jewish people involved in this as well, isn't there? They do, they, they, it doesn't really get talked about. Pre, predating the obviously the the uh, National Socialist genocide. I don't think many people know that um, only socialists publicly advocated genocide. So only socialists publicly advocated genocide, uh, yet we've still got um, uh, Frederick Engels, Manchester, Manchester Labour Party putting up a statue to Frederick Engels. In the 19th, 20th centuries, I think that's, 
That's a very little known fact, and, and it seems shocking if you mention it. I've, I've lectured on it here and in other universities, and it's always, always greeted with a sense of shock. Shock, well, uh, but I mean, uh, the, the blood trail, now, now we can tie back uh, Hitler as a revolutionary Marxist communist. So it all ties back to Marx, uh, including, uh, I, I don't know what aspect of uh, socialism or what part of socialism uh, Giovanni Gentile and uh, Mussolini uh, followed. Obviously, national socialism, as correctly pointed out by Tick, is not the same as fascism. But... The, 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 there seems to be an overlap, so it, it would not surprise me if fascism comes out of Marxism as well. So it all stems back to this fellow, Andy's pal, um, that's now got a statue in Manchester. Engels. <laughs> By the, the, the British Labour Party. First appeared in... In January 1849, in in Marx's journal uh, Neue Rheinische Zeitung, Engels wrote of the. Uh, so Engels was obviously an intellectual contributor as well as Marx to the the start of what we can see as communism. Now we can see it as a, an an off branch of uh, off branch to national socialism, which might have off branch to fascism. I, well, that's not confirmed yet, but obviously fascism rightly pointed out and national socialism were not the same. Hundred thousand Jews in the Italian um, Italian fascist party. Obviously, um, national socialism from obviously Jewish involvement at the highest level into being anti-Semitic. How the class war in Marxian terms means that when socialist socialist revolution happens, the class war happens. <laughs> Manchester, Manchester Labour Party brought them in. Thought the two mass murdering Germans would be a good idea for Celtic Britain. Uh, there will be primitive societies in Europe uh, two stages behind because they're not even capitalist yet. And he had in mind the Basques and the Bretons and the Scottish Highlanders. So they wanted to commit genocide on the Scots, so any Scottish Marxist is de facto a traitor uh, in this country. And the Serbs and... Uh, so, uh, they ba so basically... Engels of the Jewish lineage, who changed obviously to being a Protestant or whatever he was, uh, wanted to commit genocide on the other peoples of Europe, which, to be honest with you, he did quite successfully. Uh, he calls them racial trash. So uh, Marx and Engels were racist, so, uh, uh, and reverse racist probably, I would say as well. Uh, maybe Europeans who were against other Europeans, so reverse racist. I felt good, well, up fellow racial trash and they will have to be destroyed because being two stages behind in the historical struggle it will be impossible to bring them up to the point of being revolutionary he spoke about the vulgarity and uh, uh, dirty dirtiness of, of slavic people you see so don't forget um, that um, the Marxists then were able to infiltrate, well, they set up the Frankfurt School, Jewish Marxists, and Jewish Marxists, um, that was in the that was about this period of time as well, um, in the run-up to the rise of National Socialism. And then we had Jewish Marxists in the Paris School in the 1960s, who then fused racist, race, race sexist, and um, based things with... Um, Race, sex, is be and uh, and heteronormative things to with uh, discrimination and found it acceptable. So uh, the the Marxists have just been a nasty wee bunch, haven't they? Um, uh, what's his name? Chelsea, Chelsea. Ha. So I don't know if Chelsea Handler's Jewish or not, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so um, listen, th listen to this. This is... What is your type, by the way? So this is just the postmodernist Marxist, race-based postmodernist Marxist scumbaggery of this individual who, who's been in indoctrinated into thinking that this is somehow acceptable. 
I think black, you know, I mean, with white men and the white straight white men have been acting for the last couple of years. I, I've never met Chelsea Handler. I, I suspect that none of you guys have ever met Chelsea Handler. I don't know what she's talking about, the way that straight white men have been acting uh, for this. But I, I think on behalf of all white, uh, straight white men, we don't care. You go, you go black. I'll probably be that advert where uh, the, 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 the representative of the black guys will be saying, we don't want her either. Then the Chinese guys, we don't want her either. Over to you, to the uh, Eskimos, we don't want her either. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be her. Absolutely obnoxious individual. Carry on. C- can continue with your racism, your Marxist racism. I think there's only one direction to go in. That's black, Asian, Latinx, anything that isn't, you know, a white privileged male who's... De- well, I, I, and, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, that uh, of white men, but I mean, this has been indoctrinated right through the media. Obviously, she's not very funny. And uh, she's, uh, this has been indoctrinated through from the Frankfurt School to, uh, to Columbia University and now like a cancer right throughout the American uh, universities and, and the field. That this, uh, this is just racist, sexist and, and uh, heteronormative uh, phobias. Uh, again, this is uh, racism. But as we know in Scotland, we nippy the mad lesbo who has not produced any children anyway, who wants to destroy Scotland by through the use of open immigration, have black history months, which there's, there, there hasn't really in the uh, one i mean really in the only in the last 60 years if you took out the people who have came here over since maybe 1950 there, there probably wouldn't be a black po- population here but yet we've got a black history one so what's that history going to be since the 1950s it's just nonsense and it's uh, this is the racism that uh, comes out of the same Marxist ideologies, it uh, just get twisted a bit by the Frankfurt School, but they they, they laid waste and genocide to uh, Europe, as we've seen by the bodies, whether it be National Socialism or uh, Communism or the starvation. Even in Ethiopia, a great bunch uh, getting starved by a, a Marxist-Leninist uh, uh, political party, completely incompetent. Denying what's happening. But you've not said anything. Just, let me just see, show you how vacuous what this stupid bint is saying. So let's just uh, hear, I mean, honestly, uh, I don't think any uh, white straight guy would go near you because you're obviously an airhead. What is your type, by the way? I think black, you know? Great, good luck with that, guys. I mean, with white men and the way straight white men have been acting. So the way that straight white men have been acting. So unless we act the way that you want us to act, then we're out. Is that is that the way it is? Well, I'm not never going to do that. Never ever am I going to act the way you want me to act. I'm uh, I'm not interested in acting the way that you want me to act. Uh, and I don't know even though you're not that significant. You're not that important that I would ever want to act the way that you wanted me to act. So and I don't think you know all straight white men making these categoric uh, categorical. Um, statements about whole demographics that's how national socialism happened that's how many of the other things from right from marx happened the the genocide because you make categoric statements about a whole group of people but i mean a real scumbag of an individual this this one for the last couple of years i think there's only so the, the 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 last couple of years straight white men have been doing what you haven't actually um, said what they've been doing that's displeasuring you one direction to go in. That's black, Asian. Black. That's two directions there, dum dum. That's two directions. So if black and Asian is two directions. So that's not one direction. You're just about to list another one because you're that stupid that you just have got no sense of yourself. It's it's embarrassing listening to you chunter on this racist, sexist uh, nonsense that is be is permeated through the schools, the school system by um, the postmodernist Marxists that are now in charge of our governments. Latina. Including Boris. Anything. Anything. So that's not one direction, is it? That's multiple directions. So basically, you're just the, the town bike. Is Maybe that's why the straight white men are uh, not really interested in you. Just saying. That isn't, you know, a white privileged male who's... White privileged male? But I thought you were in Hollywood. So what? What? So you're, so it's not all white men now. It's just white privileged men. So you've got a problem with... But you're going to discriminate against all white men. So all white men are privileged. Yeah. I, it's coming from you, a multi-millionaire. 
who's just making fundamentally racist, sexist statements against one. If you change that to I just wouldn't date blacks or I just wouldn't date Jews, um, but yet yeah, this is the, the, the new acceptable racism coming out uh, this scumbag's mouth. I don't know if Charles Handel is Jewish or not, but we, we, that would certainly be very interesting. Denying what's happening. I'm denying what's happening about what? You've not said anything. You've not categorised, you've not made a categoric statement. You've just been racist, sexist. Probably, I'm surprised you've not said that um, you were only interested in women. Um, about uh, a whole group of people and lumped them all in together about a subject that you've not even uh, crystallised about what you're actually talking about. You're just literally chuntering on. I mean, listen, that's not all men, obviously. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm glad you've just justified it then. But you did say, yeah, you know, you, you have actually said it's all white men. So because you're obviously some sort of reverse racist, maybe I'm a, a, one of these Marxist racists um, that you think is acceptable. I don't find white racism acceptable either. So uh, that, that, that'll that be getting challenged very soon as well. We all know that there are good men out there. but I'm Oh, do you? Oh, well, I'm sure they're staying far away from you. You'd be as far, if I was considered a good a good man, I'd be a million miles away from you. You know, very much like the police. Uh, oh, very much like the police. So white men are very much like the police. Okay, carry on. There are too many bad apples to. Open. Right. So Chelsea Handler has had sex with uh, uh, everybody in Europe, all the white men in Af in um, Australia. She's basically. The, the, the bike, the comedic, comedic bike of the world who said sex with all men and met all white men and she's now moaning. She, I just want to clarify this. She's moaning about something that she's not actually clarified. So we don't actually know what she's chuntering on about. It's just blah, 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 blah. Uh, all, all these white men have done... But it's not all men, obviously not, because you've just classed, uh, said you're into Asians, Hispanics and anybody else. It's not white, a white male. But all white men are privileged, which is obviously uh, quite clearly not true. So it's all just nonsense that's come out. And you've not told us what, um, even if I was prepared to change, which I, I certainly wouldn't change for you, um, uh, my perspective, that uh, what was uh, what you're actually talking about, it's just nonsense. Overlook as a collective. like Right, so what uh, is the collective done? You've still chuntered on for now about 30 seconds. We're still not any clearer. Carry on. There has to be a collective reckoning. A collective reckoning about what, you stupid? Mm. And saying, hey, ladies, we're sorry, oh. you know, for everything we've done. We right, so just a blanket apology, guys. It's all our fault. Women don't do anything wrong. Nothing, not a thing, not a thing. Not like we Nippy and uh, our ferry fiasco where I think she's managed to uh, double the, the price of the ferries and still not got it produced. Carry on. We didn't understand that you were at such a disadvantage. Oh, no, not a disadvantage. Well, you're letting guys into your sports your sports facilities now and not and saying anything about it, um, which will destroy female sports, absolutely destroy them. And... Uh, that uh, I'll, I'll just be fully dudes. Female sports will be just going to be fully men. And then uh, what will eventually happen is that there's no gender uh, d uh, definition and women won't be participating in sports. So you're not going to be participating in that aspect. ...that every marginalised group was at a disadvantage because of us. So white men have made every woman, even though she's a multi-millionaire S, disadvantaged so she's a victim guys we should all feel sorry for Chelsea Handler because she's a victim not not the fact that she's a multi-millionaire international comedian and I'm using comedian very loosely because the left aren't funny they're, they're, they're cringe they're cringy but they're, so she's a victim guys and I would like all you guys especially who are unemployed or have any problems who've been in wars and now starving on the streets to feel sorry for Chelsea Handler because she's a big victim because she's got a vagina since the beginning of time. Oh, since the beginning of time. So we've now got to apologise. It's not just convenient now, guys, for apologising for something you've not done in this life. You've now, because you've got a penis, have to apologise for everything that's happened to women all over the years. And this is not just nonsense, Marxist nonsense, uh, victimhood uh, apologetics here. So, I mean, honestly, but this is obviously getting pushed through the media, through our media, uh, through the American media and our media, and we're, we're, we're having to be privy 
to this self-entitled, self-opinionated idiot. Um, and we've got to, so all men have got to apologise to her. Well, she's been racist and sexist. And uh, we have now not allowed to be racist and sexist because uh, Hamza useless, useless, the Islamo-fascist, a member of Child Rapist Death Cult, has said that we are not allowed to offend anybody else. But we are allowed to be offended. No, no, no uh, rules on them. Carry on. So a lot of my material is aimed at, hey guys, we're trying to make sure you don't go extinct. So Hey guys, hey guys, I prefer to go extinct, extinct and stick my penis anywhere near you. So there, there you go, there you go. I'd rather you go and uh, go to Africa, have black kids. Uh, it's no problem, none, uh, there's no issue there. Go over there, please go over. Go to Asia, go to Asia, leave us alone. Go away, there's no issue. We're not interested, thank you. Can you fucking listen to what we're telling you? No, we're not interested because you're just full of it. We, we already know. Get let the, the let the black guys deal with you. And just shut up. No, you shut up. And say you're sorry. No, we're not saying we're sorry. You say you're sorry. Say you're sorry. No, we'll no, 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 no. Tell you when your probation period is over. Yeah. How obnoxious! I mean, honestly, uh, that that scene in Jaws where the, the 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 fisherman dragged his nails down the actual chalkboard is actually more tuneful than this sorry piece of shit. Mm. In about six months to a year. Yeah, can you not make it longer? Can you give us a life sentence, please? Speaking for all white men now. I don't understand why you're not more active on Tinder then, because it seems like the guys that you want are not on Raya. I'm on Ugh. Tinder with a with a verification next to my name. Oh God, man! Honestly, good luck. Good luck. Anyway, what are you guys saying? Anyway, yeah, <laughs> God. Yeah, Mussolini was a socialist. Yeah, first raised uh, in a socialist household. Correct. If she hates white men so much, deport her to the Congo or Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. She has a, she's an anti -white. This is a common, this is common, and I, and, I, and I don't, like Nicola Sturgeon's like this. This is like Nicola Sturgeon, horsey face in uh, Canada, uh, in uh, horsey face, in Turdo in Canada, horsey face in New Zealand. This is a common that, to a lot of women, unfortunately. Not all of them, uh, not the good ones. Um, but this is a type of women that a lot of guys have got to deal with just now. Absolutely disgusting, horrible, horrible individual. Don't buy her stuff and uh, just don't interact with her. So let's go back. So this is the so that's what's getting pumped through that type of horrible, nasty, racist stuff that's coming. That is actual racism. I, I don't believe there's no racism. I just don't believe in race. I don't believe that somebody who doesn't look like me is a different race. Um, but I, uh, there, there are racists who do believe in race. Adolf Hitler was a racist, um, and uh, so was uh, so was Chelsea Handler. Chelsea Handler is a racist, and this racism comes back to Marx. This is where I'm trying to lead you back to. It all stems from Marx because Marx was a racist. Let's go back to that one. In fact, where are you? Get off my screen, you absolute scumbag! It all comes back to this. The guys, and the guys are reading it for you. Uh, he thinks, for instance, that Poland had no, no, Poland had, had, has no reason to, to exist. The classes and the races, too weak to master the new conditions of life, must give way. They must perish in the revolutionary holocaust. I think that was actually not Karl Marx that said this, I think that was Fred, uh, Frederick Engels that said it. Um, so... Basically, what he's talking about is genocide, uh, racial genocide, right back. So the, the, the founder of racial genocide was Marx and Engels. Karl Marx. Marx began it. He was the ancestor of, of uh, modern political genocide. And I don't know that any European thinker of the modern period before Marx and Engels ever publicly advocated racial extermination. I can't find anything earlier, so I presume it starts with them. This is what scumbags look like. The teachings of Marx and Engels were carefully studied by Lenin, the man who established the first Marxist... Another scumbag. You could put Hitler's face, Mussolini's 
same trajectory. Or you could branch them out this way. So the, the Marxist um, class war crap, and then uh, get... Um, I'd, well, I would branch Hitler out in the, the racial Marxism, uh, which uh, obviously he started, and uh, uh, Mussolini on the corporatist. Um, so that, that's what we're developing just now, a corporatist Marxism um, just now, which is in between proper capitalism and uh, government interference. This country on earth. One year after Lenin's death in 1924, the New York Times published a small article, which at the time went almost unnoticed. Now this is important, you need to listen to this. It was about some newly established party in Germany. The National Socialist Labour Party, of which Adolf Hitler the National Socialist Labour Party, and what what everybody what the left try to do put the emphasis on the the national. It's the socialist that's the problem, not the national. Hitler is patron and father persists in believing that Lenin and Hitler can be compared. Who's speaking? A certain Dr. Goebbels. Now we don't know. Let's go back. Let's flick back to see what uh, Tick's saying. And uh, I don't know if Dr. Goebbels. I think he comes on to Dr. Goebbels in a minute, so we'll just continue with Ticky Boy. Which is Alfred Rosenberg, Rudolf Hess, or Hans Frank, Hitler chose publicly to show his support for Eisner. Sepp Dietrich, later a general in the Waffen SS and head of Hitler's SS Liebstandarte, was elected chairman of a soldiers' council in November 1918. So, yes, Hitler and Dietrich were elected into a revolutionary socialist government. I would say revolutionary communist, even uh, more so than just socialist. I think that there's uh, non-revolutionary socialists. Um, but, um, yeah, um, revolutionary communist, Marxist in nature. In 1919, and Hitler took part in the funeral procession of Kurt Eisner, who was Jewish which is why he may not have wanted to admit that later in Mein Kampf. Towards the end of November 1918, I returned to Munich. I went to the depot of my regiment, which was now in the hands of the soldiers' councils. As the whole administration was quite repulsive to me, I decided to leave it as soon as I possibly could. He said he left Munich and then... The situation there could not last as it was. It tended irresistibly to a further extension of the revolution. Eisner's death served only to hasten this development and finally led to the dictatorship of the councils, or, to put it more correctly, to a Jewish hegemony, which turned out to be transitory, but which was the original aim of those who had contrived the revolution. Hitler claimed... So that's quite interesting. So... Uh, Hitler may have got his anti-Semitism from the um, Jewish hegemony, so a lot of Jews, and, and I think, there were, what I remember, if I can remember correctly, there was actually a Jew, uh, communist party as well, and um, he may have seen it as like a Jewish takeover of Germany from a revolutionary communist Marxist point of view, uh, where uh, he might have rejected that because he might have seen them uh, and, and I think what he does is not as Germans the, 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 the Jews were trying to take over in a, in a revolution um, and there was a lot of Jews in the, the, the USSR they were involved in that as well claims he was having doubts whether he could shape events at this time and then says a few days after the liberation of Munich I was ordered to appear before the inquiry commission which had been set up in the 2nd Infantry Regiment for the purpose of watching revolutionary activities. This was my first incursion to the more or less political field. Almost all of this is a lie. He had been involved with the Bavarian Socialists and was a political representative in their Soviet. Wow, wow. So he was a, he was a political representi representative of a communist, um, a Marxist communist uh, organisation. Wow, that's absolutely unbelievable. That, that's, that's, as I said, that's like finding a machine gun in, in Waterloo. Now, what I am is a libertarian liberal. So I'm a centrist libertarian liberal. I've already done my political compass test. So I'm not any sort of authoritarian socialist. I am the opposite of that. But I'm a centrist. But as I said, I, I, I don't recognise these guys. Uh, I, I recognise these guys as now 
been similar and national socialism now being similar to racist postmodernist Marxist that's anti white men, anti white, anti men. It's now getting a wee bit anti women as well, and also anti straight uh, heterosexual. So the, these are the, the what it's against, I think, um, just now. This new postmodernist uh, Marxism, from what we can see from uh, uh, from policy, it's been brought out by me, uh, Nippy Sturgeon, and also Boris, funnily enough. So he was already in politics before March 1919, and rather than leaving Munich and not getting involved in the supposed Jewish revolution, Hitler took part in it. The wow, so he was actually part of the Jewish re revolution. Wow, so uh, it's very difficult to find out where the anti-Semitism exactly split in. So here we go, so Bavaria was uh, the people's state of Bavaria, and the communists nicknamed it the pseudo the pseudo council's republic communists had referred to kurt eisner's bavarian people state as a pseudo council's republic shine reta republic probably because it didn't bow to moscow like they did well after kurt eisner's death the communists held their own revolution and created what they called a real council's republic so bavaria socialist republic so there was communist so i was right there was a communist but i don't know now because marx was meant to be in the the social democratic party i don't know if there was a different communist party and then they've got this other communist party so there was three separate communist or marxist organizations who wanted to out revolutionize each other revolutionary eyes each other and they all used to fight against each other that's a republic yes and then eventually uh, the national socialists so this was like divisions of the same ideology some form of socialism they were all fighting against each other for supremacy real socialism today Bavaria has Did finally elected a real council's republic Reta republic yes real socialism Today, Bavaria has finally elected the dictatorship of the proletariat. This real socialist dictatorship under the command of Max Levine attempted to create a Soviet-style system in Bavaria with links to Moscow. Hitler was elected again... I take it Mr Levine's Jewish as well. ...into this government as representative for his battalion... I'm not sure, sure when the actual deaths of the Hold Holdemore... Holdemore... Hold them all. So nineteen thirty two. So the, this was uh, a, slightly after uh, the the Jewish uh, the the starvation of uh, thousands of millions of people in the Ukraine. On the speaker's assertion that Lenin was the greatest man, second only to Hitler, and that the difference between communism and the Hitler faith was very slight, a faction war opened with whizzing beer glasses. So a faction war, so this is internally. So these uh, Marxists who have now sort of spun off into this national socialism from their, their Marxist origins, actually literally having fought against each other. One was a revolutionary and one was far now described as a far left element in the national socialists. These are all just basically Marxists. Amazing. The future Nazi propaganda minister Goebbels was openly declaring that the difference between Lenin's communism and the Hitler faith was very slight. Mm. So Hitler became a member of the communist Soviet government that had links to Moscow. And yes, this was real communism or socialism or whatever you want to call it. 
On 14th of April 1919, the day after the Communist Russia Republic, Soviet Republic, had been proclaimed, the Munich Soldiers' Councils approved fresh elections of all barracks representatives to ensure that the Munich garrison stood loyally behind the new regime. In the elections the following day, Hitler was chosen as deputy battalion representative. Not only then did Hitler do nothing to assist in the crushing of Munich's Red Republic, he was an elected representative of his battalion during the whole period of its existence. Hitler not only supported Germany's communist regime during this brief time period, but also bestowed his blessings to a government that had pledged allegiance to Lenin's Soviet Russia in Moscow. Hitler, Hitler, Hitler not only supported Germans, Germany's communist regime, don't forget eventually made a pact with uh, Stalin to destroy um, uh, Poland, which was also written in Marx's uh, T teachings to destroy po Poland wasn't a country, so he was basically f again following Marxist ideology in bed with the the Stalin, who uh, then went on to kill millions of Ukrainians. Uh, the brief history period, uh, but uh, also uh, bestowed his uh, blessings to a government that had pledged allegiance to Lenin's Soviet Russia, uh, Russia in Moscow. Let me read that again. Hitler not only supported German's communist regime during this brief time period, but also bestowed his blessings to a government that had pledged allegiance to Lenin's Soviet Russia in Moscow. Worse, having described this communist republic as a Jewish hegemony... So, uh, this is the, the... It's obviously in fighting amongst the socialists. Hitler effectively admitted that he had supported and was a part of a government that was wanting Jewish hegemony at this time. So, it's no wonder he wanted to... So, basically, a Jewish takeover of Germany. ...himself from through, it. Through revolution. Yes. Well, the revolutionary socialist government in Berlin, headed by Friedrich Ebert, leader of Karl Marx's Social Democratic Party wasn't happy that Bavarian Bolshevik... Con so, uh, um, uh, Social Democratic Party, so this is uh, obviously the one that Marx uh, was uh, was involved in from what they've already said. ...communists had declared independence from the rest of Germany, so he sent in his own revolutionary forces to put them down. So, so this is coming from the Marxist revolutionary forces to put down another bunch of Marxists uh, because they weren't rev revolutionary enough forces, really. Down. The government troops and the Freikorps, both of which were fighting for the revolutionary Berlin government, have since been deemed to be counter-revolutionaries. So two, two bunch of Marxists fighting each other from different points of Marxism. Because they fought against the Spartacists and other communists. However, this is a blatant misinterpretation of history. The Bolsheviks in Russia weren't counter-revolutionaries just because they fought against the Mensheviks. Now, I think the Mensheviks were um, libertarian socialists or libertarian communists and uh, the Bolsheviks were the authoritarian uh, socialists uh, or the communists, but uh, I think that's the, 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 the general split there. Stalin wasn't a counter-revolutionary because he fought against Trotsky. The Soviets and Chinese communists weren't counter-revolutionaries because they got embroiled in border wars with each other. And similarly, the Fry Corps weren't counter-revolutionary because they fought for a revolutionary socialist government headed by the same party Karl Marx had been a part of against another lot of revolutionaries. Yet somehow, historians have fallen under the sway of Marxist propaganda and continue to spout this myth that the Fry Corps were counter-revolutionary and far right whatever so uh, uh, yeah and that's what it just comes down to just say far right so uh, the, the the far right so rather than saying uh, both uh, Le uh, uh, Mussolini and uh, National Socialism was far left so you uh, you would have to be a communist to think that National Socialism is far right but they're certainly in the authoritarian left of the political compass and uh, that we, we've been sort of lied to and sort of gaslit for years that the the, the the National Socialists were far right when the fact they were just like postmodernist Marxist racist which now is anti-white, anti-main and anti-straight um, the, the, the difference is they eventually became anti-Jewish 
probably because of the Jewish hegemony, or possibly, should I say, possibly because of the Jewish hegemony that was trying to take over um, Germany, which turned into the Iran race. Fascinating. That means. And if the argument were true that the vision of all Freikorps and of all its members stood completely opposed to democracy, it was instead a fascist ethos that they espoused and practised, we are left with no answers as to why DDP members such as Fridolin Solider and even some Jewish veterans had fought in the Freikorps. So uh, uh, if any, if the argument were true that the vision of the Freikorps and uh, uh, all of its members stood completely opposed to demo- uh, democracy, it was instead a fascist ethos, national socialist, not fascist uh, ethos that they espoused. Well, maybe, it was, well, uh, we don't know if it was fascist at this point. Um, they, they espoused uh, practice. Again, fascism being another left-wing I- ideology. We are left with, even even if it was fascist, it's still left-wing, so it doesn't matter if it's National Socialism. Uh, none of these were sort of libertarians or libertarian liberals, or none of these, all of these um, people were in the authoritarian left, and that's it. Members uh, such as uh, Friedelin uh, Schluder uh, and even some Jewish veterans had fought in the uh, Freikroch, even the Freikorps Oberland, sections of which were later to form the nucleus of the SA, included not... So the, the SA was the, the brown shirts, the Nazi brown shirts, um, which obviously I think gets surpassed by the SS, which was the obviously the black shirts. Only Heinrich Himmler and Arthur Rodel, who, as we shall see, was to become a concentration camp commander, but also several Jewish members... Mm. Even Himmler's politicalization towards fascism, Nazism, national socialism, was only to take place in 1922. The ah, war- ah, so I mean, all these guys have been raving lefties um, right, right throughout the rear, and now to all of a sudden be called far right. So even uh, way back then, they, I don't know if they were getting called far right at that point, but even back then, a split between two socialists. Uh, or even two parts of Marxism, subset of socialism, was getting described as far right. So the way they would try and actually other you is just descri- just say far right all the time, far right, far right. And they, it's uh, both authoritarian socialists, so they're both left wing. was thus no direct line from service in the Fry Corps to a politicalisation towards radical right wing fascism, Nazi- Nazism, national socialism out of Marxism, not right wing. Well, it could only be described as right wing by some communists, but um, certainly in the authoritarian left of the political spectrum. So we've basically been lied to and manipulated for years and not told the truth. Nazism. There's a difference between fascism and Nazism. Definitely watch that. There's a difference between National Socialism, stop calling it Nazism, Mr Tick, and uh, Fascism, which is correct. 100,000 Jews, as Tick points out, in the, the Italian fascist. Uh, and uh, obviously... Um, Hitler developed uh, anti-Semitism at some point for some reason, which were still not exactly narrowed it down to the point of going to Jew- Jewish communist fun- funerals, being in uh, Jewish-dominated socialist Soviet republics of Germany, and uh, then going to uh, becoming anti-Semitic and wanting to kill all the Jews which many historians refuse to recognise, which is why I'm correcting the quote. Anyway, the revolutionary Freikorps and revolutionary government troops destroyed the revolutionary Bavarian Soviet Republic in little... In fighting between, between two Marxist organisations. ...over two weeks. The Freikorps were defending the revolution against a second revolution. So secondary, not counter-revolutionaries, but secondary, secondary revolutionaries, you're not revolutionary enough. So weren't counter-revolutionary at all. Their destruction of the Bavarian communists was made easier by the fact that this second Soviet regime was equally as unpopular as the first. Why? Because the communists decided not to help the poor at all. So the communists, as usual, don't help the poor. They let them starve on the streets because of uh, the failure, what what they implement or try to implement through agricultural uh, uh, innovations, which always fail and lead to mass starvations. To the extent where 
parents have got to eat children. ...time of need, despite claiming in their ideology that that was what they existed for. As food shortages heightened, especially of milk, the people demanded that the Soviets feed them, and their response was, what does it matter? Most of it goes to the children of the bourgeoisie anyway. So you, may, you could change that to uh, uh, Chelsea hand, Handler's white European children. That's what you could actually... That's what she was basically advocating for earlier on. Uh, oh, I wouldn't date white straight men uh, if uh, they uh, don't apologise to me for something that they've never done to her as a group, collectively. Anyway, we are... But this just shows you where it comes from, her, her her ideology. And I mean, I don't know if she's been schooled in Marxism, where she got her stupid ideas from, but they're, they're, even if she's, it's not conscious and she's just absorbed them, this is where they're coming from. I'm not interested in keeping them alive. No harm if they die. They'd only grow into enemies of the proletariat. A lot of the Bavarian socialist leaders were Jewish, adding to the idea that the Marxists were a bunch of Jews. But one soldier... Well, obviously, uh, we know Marx came from a Jewish lineage. I thought um, uh, Engels was Jewish, but apparently he's just he's German. Uh, ethnically German, not ethnically Jewish German. During the Bavarian Red Army, who wasn't Jewish, was Julius Schreck, who would later go on to be Hitler's chauffeur until he died of natural causes in 1936. Schreck would, in March 1925, found the Schutzstaffel, or SS for short. So, the guy who founded the Nazi SS and later became Hitler's chauffeur was a communist in 1919 and fought for the Red Army. Wow, wow. It just gets wower and wower, doesn't it? As we read, it didn't go down well with potential voters. So, the Nazis changed their tactics. Do let me just ruin that here? Uh, Propaganda Minister Goebbels was openly declaring that the difference between Lenin's communism and the Hitler faith was very slight. As we read, it didn't go down well with potential voters, so the Nazis changed their tactics. early campaign posters quietly disappeared. They never again publicly stressed their resemblance to communists. See, public, publicly expressed, well, now we know where it's come from, thanks to Mr Tick, that it's come from because they were communists. Unbelievable. And they never, they never stopped being socialists. In the inner circle, however, the Nazis and Hitler were more outspoken. Wow, look at that. I mean, really, honestly, they, they, they already knew in, the, in their uh, coinage, they knew where they came from. They knew that the origins of National Socialism was Marx and Engels. What are you guys saying? She is a hand. It, uh, I often said that, uh, that he had learnt a great deal from Marxism. From reading. A great deal. He was an elected member of a socialist uh, neo-revolutionary Marxist organisation. Marx, I mean. Uh, the whole of National Socialism is based upon it, he said. There you go. The whole of Nazi ideology is based upon Marx. There you go. Boom. Game over. I can stop here, but I'm not. Meaning doctrinally based. Uh, people keep forgetting uh, that Nazi regime in Germany was also socialist. Yeah, I would, I, I would say it was Marxist in particular. It was the officially were called uh, National Socialist Workers Party. So it's a branch of socialism. The Soviets were international socialists and th those were in Germany national socialists. So it's the same thing in reality, only slightly different interpretation. <laughs> I mean, look at this. You, you can see where the inspiration came from, can you?
and obviously um, uh, Marx was anti-Semitic as well. He, 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 one of the things, let's get Mr. Danko involved here. Let's see, county, county boy, where are you? This is him. Brilliant. Best. Thanks everyone for joining today. Second best comedian. Uh, as I've said a couple times. Second best comedian in Scotland just now. Count Dankula. Uh, Let me just see if I can get this at the right stage. This is fantastic as well. It's absolutely brilliant. I think it might be at the start. I think it's not, it's the end. Oh, maybe it is at the start. Ah, yeah, here we go. All the gods of man and turns them into commodities. Yeah. <laughs> Just to show <laughs> what is the worldly religion of the Jew? Huxtery. <laughs> what is his worldly god? Money. Money is the jealous god of Israel, in face of which no other god may exist. Money degrades all the gods of man and turns them into commodities. The bill of exchange is the real god of the Jew, as God is only an illusionary bill of exchange. The chimerical nationality of the Jew is the nationality of the merchant, of the man of money in general. It's absolutely sickening that people in this modern day... And, and this is obviously from um, Marx, but it could be quite as easily come from uh, Hitler. Don't follow the ideology of such a rampant anti semite <laughs> So, I mean, that's uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, but let's just get this a wee bit. So, that's us finished with that one. Let's go back. Hermann Esser, one of Hitler's earliest supporters, who became the first propaganda chief of the NSDAP, had been for a while a journalist on a social democratic newspaper. Gottfried Feder, whose views on interest slavery so gripped Hitler's imagination in summer 1919, had sent a statement of his position to the socialist government headed by Kurt Eisner the previous November. Just to point out, Gottfried Feder was one of the founders of the German Workers' Party that would later become the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or NSDAP, the Nazi Party. It's also interesting that many socialists will say that the Nazi party did attract socialists to its ranks in the early... Oh, did they, did they say that? I think they more not attracted them. I think high-level um, communist Marxist, revolutionary Marxists, were the leaders of the actual National Socialist Party. ...the days, but it was all a trick, and Hitler had them bumped off, proving that he wasn't a socialist. They talk about Ernst Röhm getting assassinated in the Night of the Long Knives, and also that Hitler killed Gregor Strasser and exiled his brother Otto Strasser, all of whom supposedly represented the left-wing socialist element of the National Socialist Party. There's a million counter-arguments against this, but on the topic of this video, it's interesting that neither Ernst Röhm nor the Strassers participated in the Communist Bavarian Socialist Republic. So, these guys are in the Communist Soviet Republic, high-ranking, uh, the highest-ranking uh, members of the National Socialist Party, and these guys are in the, um, the Marxist um, Social Democratic Party, and these all moved in with Hitler to form the National Socialists. So every one of these guys are actually from Marxist or revolutionary Marxist or some sort of extreme far left idea, uh, group before they become National Socialists. Every one of them, they fought against each other, but then they joined to, uh, to form National Socialism. You'd think that they, as the left-wing socialist element, would support... So this is, this is the, the left-wing, although I don't know how they don't get described as the left-wing as well, mind you, or the far-left, because they're the people that joined the Marxist revolutionaries that were that were one greater revolution, whereas these were the social democratic Marxist revolutionaries. 
and they're described as the, the left wing in the National Socialist Movement. Uh, I don't know the internal politics of the uh, of National Socialism to be able to define that just now. Maybe in years to come, I will try and nail down why they were... Where, why in this authoritarian left wing ideology that these both these uh, both of all of these guys were revolutionary Marxists to begin with, and then became national socialists. Or the communists, but not only did they not, they actually fought against it. Both Strasser's and Ernst Rom were members of Freikorps EP, along with Hans Frank and Rudolf Hess. Hans Frank would be the guy who took charge of Poland and oversaw the extermination camps. Rudolf Hess would obviously go on to be the deputy Führer, second only to Hitler, until he decided to fly to Scotland because he really liked Iron Brewer. Iron Brewer, Iron Brewer, not Brewer. Epp would later be appointed by Hitler to Reich's governor of Bavaria in 1933. So all of these supposedly left-wing elements of the Nazi party fought in the supposed far-right counter-revolutionary movement against the communists in Bavaria, which Schreck and Hitler were in. So NSDAP members who fought against the Soviets, but I don't know what they were in. They were in the Freikorps, which was then... um, um, put down to counter the other, not counter revolution, but other further left revolutionaries that Hitler and uh, Schreck, uh, well, Schreck uh, were in. So the the Marxist S, S, SDP, um, Social Democrat Party, um, where Marx was in, fought against other Marxists. So this was two Marxist organisations fighting against each other. And then we have to get lied to by people who are now saying that these are all far right, <laughs> far right Marxists. <laughs> so, who was the left wing element of the party again? More likely, two revolutionary left wing entities mm-hmm. were vying for power against each other, and all of these future members of the National Socialist Party were caught up fighting for what they perceived to be real socialism. But obviously Hitler later wanted to downplay his role in the socialist and communist Soviets of Bavaria and the reason was because he had to do his best later to separate his national socialist ideology from Marxist socialist ideology since there were so many similarities between the two. In fact, it's my opinion that that was the reason Mein Kampf was written, to make a distinction between his socialism versus their socialism. That's why there are passages in Mein Kampf where he's defending himself from the accusation that they were one and the same. The racial Weltanschauung, the Nazi worldview, is fundamentally distinguished from the Marxist by reason of the fact that the former recognises the significance of race and therefore also... Per- so again, this is uh, moved on to um, race, this um, fictional thing called race, uh, human race, it's, it's not race-based politics. Uh, it's now um, with Chelsea Handler and all our um, intersectionalists uh, pushing this um, identity politics as well personal worth and has made these the pillars of its structure. These are the most important factors of its Weltanschauung worldview. If the National Socialist Movement should fail to understand the fundamental importance of this essential principle, if it should merely varnish the external appearance of the present state and adopt the majority principle, it would really do nothing more than compete with Marxism on its own ground. For that reason, it would not have the right to call itself a Weltanschauung worldview. If the social programme of the movement consisted in eliminating personality and putting the multitude in its place, then National Socialism would be corrupted with the poison of Marxism, just like our national bourgeois parties are. Translation, the only difference between National Socialism and Marxism is that National Socialism believes in racial classes rather than economic classes. And that's if... Just, the- just like the postmodernist Marxists in the, in the UK that um, we nippy and, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, Bojo, uh, is, uh, are, are basically both pushing, although in different parties... Um, Boris is meant to be a conservative, but still talking about woke, which is postmodernist Marxism, and uh, we nippies doing the, the the same. So let's go and have a wee look at. Um, let's see you resisting the lies.
And uh, here we go into this. Uh, one of the most cancerous. Let's see what you're saying here. For people that look like her. I decided to live there for the rest of my life that I would not be quote unquote represented. But for some strange reason, these people that come here, whether they are born here or whether they. The murder of George Floyd in But if you wanted to be represented by people who look like you, why would you not just stay in uh, the country that you're from? If that's what you, if you require to have people who look like you, uh, which is a, this is a racist concept anyway, and it's racist against straight white men. Uh, that that uh, will be a gradual push out of uh, positions that were actually held. Um, by straight white men. Twenty. Through uh, open door, through open door immigration. And the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, children and young people. So what's Black Lives Matter got to do with Scotland? If it happened in America, absolutely nothing. So the, and the Black Lives Matter movement is uh, started by uh, openly communists. You can go and look for yourself. I'm not going to bring it up, but open communists. So uh, the Scottish government under uh, the uh, alleged lesbian Nicola Sturgeon is now pushing for Marxist group to be integrated in a in a country that's 96% white for uh, Marxist reasons. People in Scotland met with the Deputy First Minister to make their voices heard and share their lived experiences of racism. Young people explained that teachers should think about how to better reflect black and minority ethnic history and experience. There, there isn't really any, to be honest. It, it, it is literally a very small uh, minority. If you go back past the, far, the last 50, 60 years, it, it's nearly 100% white. Uh, so they're, they're, in Scotland, you, we would have to either A, take that period of time, B, lie about hi history, um, C, take a reflection on a very, very tiny uh, proportion, which I suspect they probably won't have much evidence for, um, that they're not going to have much background, historical background, because a lot of them might be poor and they might have not had any historical uh, significance. Very few few white people in a, in a country that's predominantly white uh, have had uh, any of their stories reflected at a later date. So you're now talking about, um, because... The majority of people, the majority of people just now in Scotland who are, are, are of African uh, origin uh, are, are not born here. That, the vast majority, nearly three times, that 8,000 people that are born here, whether they be mixed ethnicity or, or, or whatever, um, were pro are probably even first or second generation, so they don't have a history here. here. So you're either have to, going to have to concoct a history or use... Uh, the the history from where they're actually from to actually be represented because it's it, but I don't understand if you wanted to be represented why would you not just stay in your own country the country of origin if you want people who look like you why would you not just stay in the country where you're from ethnically as well as the importance of tackling racism in society today so they're, they're again talking about racism so we're now back to the racism of Marx they're talking about BLM, another Marxist organisation. Uh, we're talking about Hitler, who his racism was against other people, but this is racism directed at straight white men. From this meeting, the Scottish government set up a race equality and anti-racism and education programme. So anti-racism is a racist ideology. It's not non-racist. It's, uh, it's a deliberate racist ideology. It's just the difference is it's against straight, straight white men and, and to that extent uh, women as well. Straight, straight white women as well. With a focus on four areas. One, education leadership and professional learning. Two... I really want to hear what tickets, uh, what uh, resisting the lies is saying. I'm not really interested in this. I, I, but I mean, this is classical uh, Marxist propaganda. Build racial literacy programmes. This is, this is indoctrination of your children into racist Marxism. Freedom of information request that I managed to stumble across. Um, information request and response under the Freedom of Information Act, right? Uh, information on the Scottish Government's building racial literacy programme as follows. What is the content of the programme? Who created the programme? Who is evaluating the programme? Is the programme to be rolled out to all schools and if so, to whom? If the programme is to be rolled out to all, is it compulsory and if so, for who? How much has the programme cost so far and what is it projected to cost? So the content of the programme, building racial literacy, aims to empower educators to identify and implement anti-racist behaviours and processes in their everyday practice. These are the programme outcomes. To build racial literacy in particular, to start learning about the nuances of racism and anti-racism. 
Well, let's have a wee, uh, look at this, because I find this quite uh, interesting. Because it seems like, um, oh, there's uh, <laughs> there, there's uh, Sir Keir Starmer with Jeffrey Epstein in the Trilateral Commission. Oh, that's a very nebbish. Uh, he doesn't know what a woman is. I wonder if uh, Jeffrey Epstein knew what a woman was. Also, the, um, uh, that uh, he is... Uh, <laughs> He's uh, been uh, presiding over the the Jimmy Summer Summer uh, Summer Summer Jimmy Summer Savile uh, events as well. Quite interesting how shady um, that Sir Keir is. So let's have a wee look at this then. Wonder if this is racism. So we've got uh, child abuse gangs have been assaulting one million uh, youngsters in the UK. So we've got Muslim rape gangs um, assaulting uh, British children that have been facilitated by uh, our government. Uh, uh, do you think that's going to be taken into consideration uh, with the uh, anti-rape? Uh, sorry, the the um, uh, let's just say the the anti-racist um, scenarios. All of these individuals. Let's have a look at this. There's oh, there's more. There's more people coming in, so that'll be good as well. I guess if you're trying to ethically cleanse your the population, then that's certainly going to be interesting. So here's a bunch of Somalis. Obviously, I've told you before that the, um, the, the Islam promotes the raping of uh, non-Muslims. Three Somali men who... Honestly. So... And, uh, so I don't know if this is classed as racism. I don't know if they're going to have to teach these guys about not being racist and not raping people. Um, but uh, certainly, this is certainly three Somali men who gang raped a white sixteen-year-old uh, girl in a bathroom. Not not said anything about racism or um, uh, uh, Christianophobic or whiteophobic or white anti-white racism. None of that's mentioned. Obviously, racism only works one way, and it's against uh, the indigenous population of a hotel where they stayed to celebrate Eid. All right, so they were celebrating. A, a Muslim traditional f uh, festival where they all just decided to gang rape a 16 year old alright ok um, uh, Osama Ahmed and Yusuf all 20 uh, guilty uh, all 20 guilty of rape they uh, attacked a 16 year old girl at uh, Victoria Park Hotel in Manchester in 2013 the trio also robbed the victim at the hotel where they celebrated Eid so they've came to the country celebrated Eid and the way that they've returned this uh, I don't know if the anti-racist stuff is going to cover this, mind you. That's going to be very interesting. Whether uh, religiously uh, enforced rape, like the Prophet used to do, is going to be covered in the anti-racist stuff. But who, who knows? Three Somali men who gang-raped a white 16-year-old girl in the bathroom hotel where they celebrated Eid um, for th uh, have been jailed for 30 years. Well, that, that young lady's... Life was probably devastated. Uh, we are just uh, teenagers. Uh, they were attacked. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Osama, uh, Osam, Ahmed and Yusuf, all now 20, were just teenagers where they attacked a girl in Victoria Park uh, Hotel regarding her as easy prey, which seems to be the, the general... I, and, and this is where it's going to confusing. Is, uh, is your anti-racist um, stuff going to cover the mass rapes of child, white British children by immigrants? I would, I would suggest you might want to start there with your anti-racist stuff. And and obviously this comes back to um, the, the racism back in the, the, the Frankfurt School. So, uh, the group uh, then alleged 17 spent the previous night in the hotel with a number with a number of other men as part of Eid celebrations when one uh, of their friends had uh, met the girl on... Uh, Blackberry, uh, Blackberry Messenger, and uh, brought her straight through. Hold on. Honestly, you pick your times, Mum. Let me just check this now. Blackberry, uh, Blackberry Messenger. Blackberry, uh, Blackberry Messenger, and uh, brought her straight through. Are we still on? Honestly, you pick your times, Mum. 
Right, we're not on. Let me just check this now. <laughs> not on, not on. Blackberry, a uh, Blackberry messenger. Uh, Blackberry, a uh, Blackberry. Stop that. Honestly, is that us? Oh no, that's not it. So, that's us, I think, back. So, I'm not sure if that's all going to be taken into consideration when they're talking about things. I, obviously, I think a lot of that just gets swept under the, uh, the carpet. The Nazis forget this, and if they stood by the principle of mob rule, then they would be Marxists. And yes, I'm paraphrasing slightly and bringing in other elements he wrote elsewhere in Mein Kampf, but that's exactly what he wrote. Now, he wouldn't have written this if others weren't accusing him of being a Marxist by another name. So he was writing this to not only defend himself, but also distinguish his socialism against their socialism. When Hitler says in Mein Kampf that he wasn't part of the Social Democratic Party, and doesn't mention his involvement in the Bavarian Soviets, and doesn't mention his attendance at Kurt Eisner's funeral, we know why. Because he was trying to distance himself, as well as his National Socialism, from the Marxists. And the Marxists are equally happy to accept this because they want to... Because they can then describe them as far right. So that's where what happens, they describe them as far right. And that, and they're not they're not far right at all. They're actually a form of a form of Marxists. Distance themselves from National Socialism because they're all very similar socialist movements. But don't worry, communists, because historians are eager to come to your rescue. In his book, Hitler's. So basically, we've been gaslit. Uh, we've either it's either been the fact that um, and and this is the the thing that's actually happening that. We've had a lot of people who don't understand political science or don't understand, or we've either been gaslit. It's either they're, they're ignorant or they're stupid. So I don't know which you prefer. Either, they either either know that, um, that um, Hitler was a Marxist or and, and they've just lied to us, or they, they uh, haven't known because they don't understand political science. And so they've either gaslit us or they've been ignorant to the fact of not understanding science as a, as political science, as a, as a, a concept in itself. So either one, either way, they're both wrong. So Hitler actually was a, was a, a form of a form of Marxism, and it, it's not the same Marxism as the uh, as the international Marxism, but as a a, a, a bastardization of Marx. First War, historian Thomas Weber explains that Hitler didn't like Munich and only returned to it because his regiment was to be demobilised there. Plus, the fact that he had no friends, or family, or a job, or a life, yep, definitely sounds like a communist, meant that he ended up staying in Munich because that's where his social network was. Or, he was a socialist. But no, because Weber... I would, say, I would say he was a Marxist now. I would actually specify that he was a, a, a racist Marxist, just like the, the Frankfurt School or eventually uh, moving into the Paris School, a racist Marxist. The only difference between Hitler and now the, um, like, uh, Humza Useless, who's brought in the hate speech bills that only targets white straight men. Again, this is uh, he just targeted the Jews. It's just a different group. It doesn't really matter. So from postmodernist Marxism back to national socialist Marxism, it's just the fact that they they have uh, they're, they're the same thing, but uh, they've just different different groups targeted. Refuses to accept this. If he really was a socialist after the war, how do we make sense of his anti-socialist expressions during the war, for which contemporary sources exist at least for 1915? How do we make sense of his closeness to and adoration of officers among the regimental staff who clearly were not socialists? So, to answer the second part, let me ask the same question from the opposite side. 
If he really was a socialist after war, how do we make sense of anti-socialist expressions? Well, he, he, he didn't... He, he, probably, he was probably um, trying to increase the, the overall exposure to um, win the elections, because there was elections had to be won uh, right there from the start. But he's come from a Marxist point. He's come from a Marxist point to create a, a national socialist movement. This is where he's come from. To, to broaden it out, because other people might have not been really keen on that, um, he would have maybe had to placate on certain policy. But the underlying identity is still there. Um, how to make uh, the sense of his closeness to the adoration of officers uh, among the regiment staff who clearly were not socialists. Officers and right, well, um, the fact that they're not socialists doesn't mean they weren't taken over by socialists. If he re just like uh, the Scottish Nationalist Party has been taken over by a woman who said she couldn't be the furthest thing from a nationalist, uh, in her own words. So uh, that that I mean it, it can happen. You can infiltrate something just like in the Sith, where the Sith took over and created into an empire. If you get somebody who lies, but you've not actually looked at what their underlying thing is, then they can be a chameleon to get to the top. Really was a far-right counter-revolutionary who hated Jews at this time. How come he was friendly with his fellow soldiers in the regiment, some of whom were Jews and most of whom were socialists, who then went on to elect him twice into the Soviets? Clearly, it doesn't matter which side of the spectrum he's on because he'll have to put up with people in his regiment that don't align with his views. And just because he had to rub shoulders with people with differing viewpoints doesn't mean he wasn't a socialist or a Nazi or whatever, right? So, so I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to steal all his content because I would like you guys to go and have a look for yourself. Um, but uh, I just wanted to cover that. He's done a, a great job, great, great job. I, I, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know uh, the, the direct link between uh, Hitler and Marxism, but now, now I do. The, the, the most interesting other point would be, obviously, he's going to these Jewish funerals. He's been um, helping the Communist Party of Bulgaria try and take it over. Where was the point of the anti-Semitism coming in? And what was his disconnect between, obviously, um, the large one, number of Jews who were Marxist and, and had, had, had helped destroy Europe? Not only, it wasn't just Jews, it was also um, other Marxist Europeans, but certainly they helped destroy Europe and killed hundreds of millions of people, tens of millions of people at least, if you include what, even what Hitler's done as well. So... Where, where, where's that then? Where, how does that, how does that work? Anyway, I've done. I'm done, done, done. That was quite interesting. I've not been back for a wee while.